Hello booktube, Sarah here and welcome to my channel. Today I'm coming to you with another weekly reading vlog. Today is uh, Saturday, February the 9th and it's about 7.30 at night. Um, it has been a lazy day today to be honest. I, um, I didn't do much today. Um, I was pretty tired. I am still pretty tired today. So um, in my last vlog on Friday night, I mentioned to you guys that I was going to bingo with my mom. Uh, to the 10 15 at night session we didn't win anything and it was a late night I didn't get in until it was after 1 a.m. and of course I had worked all day so I was of course tired from that and I tried to go to bed and I couldn't sleep it was so cold last night when I got home and because you're tired and when you're tired you just feel extra cold I um, I couldn't warm up and I just I couldn't fall asleep so it was well after 2 by the time I think I finally fell asleep and I was up this morning about 9, 9.30, I guess. And I was going to go to the gym today. That was my game plan. And I didn't make it. I didn't, I didn't, I just wasn't feeling like going. I was just still too tired. So around 11.30, Garrett and I went grocery shopping. And then we came home. Um, and I actually went for a nap from about 1 till 3 so to catch up on a bit of sleep. Uh, got up and then we, um, I com continued to edit the vlog. I was editing the vlog earlier this morning too. And uh, like before we went grocery shopping. So the vlog is finally uploading now to YouTube. Yay. But um, but I was kind of doing that all day. Because of course I don't do that generally during the week. I kind of do it all on Saturdays. And uh, which is fine. I enjoy sitting and doing it. It's, it's kind of relaxing. Um, and kind of fun. Uh, to do it in, in like one shot kind of. I sit and knit while I'm like listening to it. Because I do re-watch the clips back. Uh, in case I need to cut stuff or, you know, insert all the pictures and stuff like that. So, so yeah, that's pretty good. Um, and then we had pizza for dinner. I went, we went out and got pizza for dinner because even though I'm doing my new healthy lifestyle thing, um, life is worth living with pizza. <laughs> and you know what? You're allowed a treat, you know, it, it's, that's why it's a treat. You don't have it every day. Pizza is our Saturday night thing, and I would miss it terribly if we stopped doing it. So anyway, so yeah, so, um, and now here we are. So I thought I would sit down and uh, record um, my little clip for today. Uh, I've got, of course, some knitting to show you. It's all on my lap here. Um, oh, did I grab that? Yes, I did grab that. Okay, am I missing something? I am missing something. Ooh, I'll be right back, you guys. Sorry, there was something else I wanted to show you guys and I forgot it up on the back of the couch. So, um, I now have realized that I need to put my knitting projects in rotation and, you know, kind of work on something for a few days and then put it aside, work on something else for a few days because I cast on another sweater yesterday. Uh, yeah, I, I may have a problem. I, um, the sweater pattern was gifted to me by my friend Lynn and I bought the yarn for it. And I'm like, should I cast it on now? My friends are like, no, no, finish the sweater first. And then my friend Lynn's like, no, no, cast it on now. And this was earlier last week. And then um, last night I was just in the mood and I and I messaged, I'm like, yeah, I said, I already got two sweaters on the needles, but what's one more? And uh, they were all kind of laughing at me. But anyway, I will show you all the things that I worked on this week. And then you're only probably gonna see one or two projects each week as I, as I go, do these, as I rotate them through. And hopefully I'll get a bit of progress done on all of them. So, of course, we're going to start off with my socks. These are my Hermione's Everyday Socks in the um, Gobstopper colorway from Truly Wicked Crafts. I have one sock done, and then this is what I've gotten done on the second sock. So, the stitch marker is where, of course, I was last week when I recorded. Um, so, I've only gotten this much done. I'm about four inches into the, the foot. I have three more inches to go, and then I can start the heel on this one. I was thinking about this the other day, um, that I might start taking my socks to work again, to work on at lunch, because even though I'm sitting with other people at lunch, it just means that I can't sit and listen to an audiobook. It doesn't mean that I can't sit and knit. Knitting is one of those great hobbies that you can do while you're in the company of other people, because, you know, you can pay attention to conversation while you're sitting there knitting. So that might help me get these done a little bit faster, because I have a lot of sock yarn that I want to get through and knit all the socks. So... Yes, so there are my adorable socks. I really love these. Um, the Hermione's Everyday Pattern, as I mention every week, is a free pattern on Ravelry, um, and it was designed by Erica Luter. So yeah, living in my Bakery Bears um, bag that I got a number of years ago. So the next thing is one of the sweaters. The other sweater, the Lang Laid, I'm going to bring back into rotation this week. You'll probably see it next week. But this is the Comfort Fade Cardi 
the Comfort Fade Cardi by Andrea Mowry. Um, this is a paid for pattern on Ravelry, but I am very pleased, you guys. Um, where am I going here? Oh, the needles are jammed in. That's why it's not unraveling. So, <clears throat> so last week when I showed you guys, I was down here. I was working on the bottom of the cardigan, the, uh, the ribbing on the bottom of the cardigan, and that's where I was, that little stitch marker. So I finished that off and bound it off, and what's up with that stitch? Oh, oh well, whatever. There's going to be mistakes all through this. It doesn't really matter. Um, but the exciting thing is, guys, I cast on a sleeve. So I'm working on the sleeve on this one. This I'm actually knitting inside out. I'm knitting the sleeve inside out. So this pattern, of course, I can't give too much away because it's a paid-for pattern. The what, what people would normally consider the wrong side, if you look at knitting, stockinette stitch knitting is knitting on one side and purling on the other side. So if you look at any pullover sweater that you have, you notice that, I don't know if this is going to focus for the non-knitters out there, that this is kind of what they look like, these like little V's. You see that? Like right there? That's what the sweater would look like on the outside. And then on the inside of the sweater, or the wrong side, if you want to call it that, looks like these little bumpies. So this is done in reverse stockinette, which means the wrong side is the right side. So the outside of the sweater is going to have this. So it's going to kind of look like this, the seam is on the outside, essentially. Um, and I think that's really neat. But because it is reverse stockinette, with the sleeves, your sleeves would all be purl stitches. And I don't mind purling. It doesn't bother me. But it does. it's a little slower because I'm, I'm a little quicker at knitting than I am at purling. So in the pattern, she actually does state that if you want, knit the sleeves inside out so then you're just knitting. And then when you pull them inside out, the purl side will be the right side, if that makes sense. So I'm not very far into the sleeve. Uh, I've got a bit of a ways to go because these sleeves are like extra long. Like they come to like here and like really nice and long and, and cozy. So yeah, so so far I'm really enjoying it. Um, but yeah, I, I love this one. And this yarn is uh, Knit Picks Brava. Uh, sport weight is what it calls for. Um, I don't think the pattern calls for sport weight. The pattern calls for DK weight, which is the next size up for yarn um, but you can make it work with with uh, with sport weight and I am um, and the colorway is called seraphin which is a beautiful purple gray and I really like this one so without jamming something I'm always very careful that I don't want to jam the needles into the project <laughs> even though it's not gonna hurt anything it's just if you pull on it you might pull a stitch or something uh, well, excuse me for reaching down there I don't want to lose all my stuffs Put all this back in the bag. And this is a Mrs. Brown's bag in this uh, gorgeous, like, camper fabric, which I just love. So there's that. The next thing is the shawl. The shawl did not get a lot of love this week. This is in my bag from Mina um, the, of the Knitting Expat podcast back when she used to um, design bags or do bags. I will leave links to the podcast that I mentioned as well below in case any of you are interested in checking some of these out. I know the Bakery Bear still does do podcasts, as does... Um, Mina. Um, I don't know how often they both upload. Um, and, and yeah, and I've got, of course, some friends that I always watch. Um, um, my friend Jessica at Sarah Nova Crafts. I will leave a link to her below. Uh, my friend Lynn um, of the Wayward Skein podcast. I'll link her below. And of course, the lovely Andrea at the Cat Lady podcast. I will link her as well. These are all some of my very best friends. And yeah, I'm hoping I didn't forget anybody who still actually podcasts in the group. <laughs> we were all originally podcasters at one point and some of us not so much anymore, but, um, but we all still talk and, and of course, you know, whatever. So anyway, I will leave links to all those podcasts below. Um, and they're all fantastic. Lynn is local Canadian. Um, she's in Ottawa. Um, Andrea is in Michigan. Um, and Jessica is in uh, New Hampshire. So anyway shawl. So this is the Birds of a Feather shawl, and again, also by Andrea Mowry, the same designer of the sweater. Um, and yeah, so this one is kind of neat. I've gotten back into the gray again. Um, so like I said, it doesn't look like I got a lot done, um, but that's where I was last Saturday, and this is how much I've gotten done. Um, so yeah, it's slowly, not slowly, it's, it's getting wider as you go. So you kind of alternate colors, and there's also in the next section I'm going to do, there's going to be some lace work which will be really pretty, but yeah, so I'm really enjoying this one so far. This is going to be absolutely huge, like gigantically oversized. Um, 
the pattern here. See if I can show you guys a picture. So this is kind of, you can kind of see like how big this is going to be. So it's going to be pretty big. Um, I think I saw on somebody's project page that when they blocked theirs, like wet it when they were done and then stretched it out, it ended up being something like 10 feet long, like something ridiculous. So here's a better picture. Um, I don't want to show you guys the pattern because it's a paid for pattern, but there is a better, so you can see how big this is going to be. It's going to be huge. Um, but I just love, you know, it's, it's not the most practical shawl, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun to knit. Um, and I'm really, really enjoying it. So yeah, so there is that. Um, and then the new thing that I cast on, like I said, Lynn of, from the Wayward Skein podcast, um, gifted me this pattern. Um, it's another sweater pattern by my favorite, favorite sweater designer, which is Alicia Plummer. And the sweater is called Uncomplicated and it's just a pullover cardigan or I always want to say pullover cardigan. It's a pullover and it's got a little pocket like, like it would be here. So I'll show you guys the picture. It's not the best picture. It's like just a picture of kind of the pocket. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so uncomplicated. So you can see it's got a little pocket, like it would be right, like right here, but yeah. So I was looking through the project pages because this is knit in fingering weight. So in sock yarn. So, um, shouldn't be showing you guys the pattern, sorry. Um, <clears throat> but, um, cause again, it's a paid for pattern on Ravelry and I saw one person knit it in this yarn, but in a different color and I really liked it. So I went ahead and ordered some from Knit Picks. It was relatively inexpensive because last week Knit Picks was doing a sale on all of their red and pink yarn for Valentine's day. I don't know if it's still on or not. Um, because this vlog is not going to go up until like the 16th, I don't think. So the sale might be over by then, but I will obviously link the Knit Pick site, site below because I really do love their yarn. They've got some great yarn. And this blend of yarn is a, hold on, let me check the, tap, the thing here. Um, it's a 65 superwash merino, so it's super soft, 25% uh, nylon and 10% tweed. So it's a tweed yarn, which I think is so much fun. You get all these little specks in there. And I just think it's going to make such a rustic looking sweater. So I've only got it just cast on. I just started it last night and I didn't get a lot knit on it today. But, um, but yeah, I've just cast it on. Um, I might even go down a needle size because I tend to be a looser knitter and I'm knitting the, the size that, that they call for, but I might go down a needle size just to, to tighten it up just a little bit so you don't get like, like you can kind of see through it in a way. Um, but yeah, so this might get recast on tonight. Do I have my US fives or US... Oh, I do. Okay, good. Sorry. I was just checking my needles over here to see if I had a US five free and I do. So I will probably be recasting this on, but yeah, but the yarn is so, so soft. So the colorway, like I said, all their red and pink yarns were on sale and the other person who knit it, knit it in like this dark forest green tweed, but I went with this red cause it was on sale and it is called, what's the colorway? The colorway is, I think it's called garnet but don't quote me. Garnet Heather is what it's called. Yeah. Isn't that gorgeous? It's going to be such a pretty sweater. So yeah, I'm very excited about that one. So when I'm done here, I'm going to plop myself back down on the couch and pull this out and recast it back on, um, with smaller needles. So yeah, so that is all for the knitting for this week, you guys. Um, let's get into what I've been reading. So I started a new audiobook today and that is Barking Up the Wrong Tree by Jen McKinley. This is the second book in the Bluff Point series. Um, and this is about a woman who recently lost her job and she is having to move out of her uh, apartment in Brooklyn because she's broke and move back home to her parents' house in Bluff Point, Maine. Um, you know, as she even says in the book, like a typical millennial. <laughs> Not generalizing, that's what she says in the book. But her neighbor next door at her place in Brooklyn, it was an older lady, she passed away. And she had left um, an inheritance. Um, so the inheritance, it's Carly is our main character's name, Carlotta, but she goes by Carly. And she, um, she you know, she knew it wasn't anything major. She knew the, the old lady didn't have a lot of money or anything like that. But she had left her all of her pets, which included a goldfish, um, a lizard, a bird that swears. <laughs> So a parrot that swears he's hysterical so far I think he's one of my favorite characters in the book and an old um, dog um, named Saul so she has these animals so before she left Brooklyn she uh, in her building gave um, the lizard and the um, and the 
and the goldfish to these two little boys who lived in the building and they because they really liked them so she kind of passed them on to them and she still has the bird and the dog so she's gone back home and right away she's run into this rather good looking guy who who runs these classes for seniors to help them stay fit and active so I guess the romance is going to go from there. I'm only about an hour or so into this audiobook. Um, I did not get a lot of audiobook listening time done today. Like I said, I was, you know, I, I was editing the vlog and I do listen to my audiobooks while I'm waiting for stuff to upload or to um, to run through the, the editing software that I have because I edit each individual clip individually. And um, just because it's easier, my program couldn't handle like the hour plus that I do. So I do it in clips. Um, and then I put it all together using Windows Movie Maker. But anyway, so I listened to them in between, but I mean, that might only be 10 or 15 minutes at a time. So, you know, I didn't get a lot of that done. Then we went grocery shopping, then I had the nap, and then I came home. And so, and I figure I'll listen to it tomorrow. My plan is to go to the gym tomorrow. I miss going today, so I'm going to definitely go tomorrow. And then I'm going to stop at my aunt's to get my hair dyed because it desperately needs to be dyed. Um, the red has really come out of it. Like you can still see it way up here, but it's of course washed out. So it's going to be that bright red again when you guys see it. You guys will actually see my videos from this week with the red hair before you'll see me in the vlog. Because tomorrow I also plan on editing or uh, filming a couple videos for this week coming. Um, so yeah, so that is that first book that I'm listening to and I am enjoying it. The next book that I'm working on is How Not to Marry an Earl by Christine, uh, Christine Merrill, I believe, or Christina Merrill. Um, this is the second book, I think, in the Strickland Sisters uh, series. And this one is really fun. I'm really enjoying it. It's about a man named Miles, and he is American born and raised. And this is a Regency romance. And he found out that he is now the new Earl for this you know, place in England. He's the new Earl. And so he travels, spends his last bit of money that he has, and he travels to England from America, rescues a dog along the way, and um, ends up at this estate. And there is a very, very distant relative, um, some cousin, gosh knows how many times removed, that is already there, and her name is Charity. And she is the third sister, the youngest sister. Her two older sisters are already married. And she's trying to find these missing gems or jewels that belong to the family. Now the family is now poor. They have no money and you know he's hoping to scrounge up something enough that he could pretty much run off like a thief in the night and get back to America. Um, and she's looking for these jewels because she wants enough money to be able to kind of be her own person and live on her own. She's plain. She's like that. This is you look at the cover and you go, no, she's not. She's like pretty good looking. Um, but they describe her as being plain with her spectacles and and, you know, she's a little odd. You know, she likes to read. I don't know why liking to read makes you odd. <laughs> I think we're all pretty normal. But you know what I mean? She's that kind of character. Um, but she's really sassy and I like her quite a bit, although she is a liar. She lies quite a bit. But to be fair, so is he. He, when he first meets her, did not tell her that he is the Earl, and he still hasn't. Um, he hasn't let that be known yet, that that's who he is. So he's there under false pretenses as well. So both of them are lying to each other in a way. So anyway, um, I'm about 40% of the way through this. I'm going to get some more reading done on it tonight, and I'm really enjoying it. And then the last thing I've been getting some reading done on today is, of course, my 40 Years of Harlequin Project book. This is Museum Peace by Anne Stewart. It is a Harlequin um, American romance. It says Love Affair. But that is the um, Mills and Boone um, uh, imprint, uh, not the uh, Harlequin imprint, excuse me. excuse me. And it's about a woman who works in a museum, and there is a man that she doesn't much like. He keeps stealing artifacts and things, paintings and stuff that she's trying to acquire out from under her nose. And she, one night, is very angry, so she pens off a nasty letter to him. <laughs> this was 1984, they didn't have email. And she pens off this nasty letter to him and puts it in an envelope and kind of throws it on her desk, you know, never to be actually mailed. And then it turns out her secretary actually mailed it to him. So now he's a little upset at her because she has called him every name under the sun. And um, he has now just recently acquired another painting that she wants to get her hands on. And her boss has pretty much told her, you need to get this painting. I don't care how you do it, but get this painting. So, you know, that's kind of where we are at this point in the story. And I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm not very far into it. I'm due to get this one done by Tuesday. 
but I do get the bulk of these read on the weekends. Uh, it's just atypical for me. I'm about 50 pages into it. It's about a 230 page book. Um, that right there is my goal for today. Um, so about another 50 pages, which shouldn't take me very long at all. And then I've got a goal for tomorrow and then the rest to finish off on Monday. But yeah, so, so far I'm enjoying this. I mean, it's Anne Stewart. She, she still writes. She write, wrote a great um, romantic suspense series. I think it was the Ice series. Like Ice Blue and Ice... Like they all had ice in the title. And they're re-releasing them, I believe, on the Kindle. And they're really good. I've read a couple of them and I, I'd like to reread them. But yeah, getting reacquainted with this author has been really enjoyable. So anyway, guys, that is it for today's clip. As usual, these first ones are always a little bit longer than normal. But um, that's about it. And I'll check in with you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. Hi guys, it is Sunday. It is February the 10th and it is just after nine o'clock at night. Thought I'd come to you and just to say hi, um, and give you a reading update for today as well um, because I'm heading to bed in the next hour or so. So uneventful day really. I went to the gym this morning. I did an hour on the treadmill, yay me. Went over to my aunt's house and she dyed my hair. So it is red again. It looks brown, um, like a brownish red in this light. But no, as you can see, it's clearly, it's a darker red again. So I am happy, very happy with it. Um, and my brother and my niece and nephew and sister-in-law showed up at my aunt's. So we kind of had a little visit. And I came home and I relaxed for most of the afternoon. I had a little nap this afternoon. And like I said, I'm going to bed in the next hour or so. I want to get some more reading done. I want to finish the book I'm reading. Um, and yeah, so relatively quick little update. <clears throat> um, reading update. So I did not get much read in my audiobook today. I got about an hour, no, about three hours read on it, I guess, um, uh, at the speed I listened to it at. So um, that is Barking Up the Wrong Tree by Jen McKinley, uh, the second book in the Bluff Point series. I've talked about this one yesterday. Um, a woman comes home after kind of being out on her own, you know, kind of coming home to mom and dad so she can get her life back on track and She's now met James. Uh, he is the love interest and they have developed a relationship. Um, I still love the parrot. Um, the parrot is still potentially my favorite character in this whole book. <laughs> he's not exactly polite. He's rather rude. He swears. He's, I think he's adorable. <laughs> and she's trying to teach him manners because she doesn't want to keep him. Um, uh, you know, at first it was like very much, she didn't want to keep him or the dog and and, uh, you know, now I think the bird's starting to grow on her. So I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's, <clears throat> it's a good contemporary romance, don't get me wrong. But it's just funny to think that when my favorite character is, uh, you know, the bird in the story. It's, it's kind of fun. Um, and then I am almost done reading. I'm about 70 some odd percent of the way through How Not to Marry an Earl by uh, Christine Merrill. Um, my plan is to finish that in the next hour. So that should be no problem for me to get it done. I've got about five chapters left, so I should be able to fly through that relatively quickly. So my goal is to get that one to, done tonight, and I'm really, really enjoying it. We're now at a point in the book where they're doing the treasure hunt. Um, I don't remember if I mentioned this yesterday, but I kind of gave you the, the uh, you know, a little bit of the story where he's an American, a long-lost heir, and they need, the er they need a, a new Earl, and he has, they've traced back through the family tree and found him. Uh, his name is Miles, her, her name is Charity, and they're very, very distantly related, like second or third cousins, six times removed, something. It's never actually explained in the book how in any way, shape, or form they are related, but um, whatever it is, it's very distant. And I think the author did that on purpose because there is going to be a relationship, but they're so distantly related that it's there's no point in even mentioning it, if it makes sense, if that makes sense. But they're looking for this missing treasure, this these missing jewels. And they're at the part now where they're kind of starting the search. And it's very, very interesting. I'm really, really enjoying it. I mean, the book as a whole is really good. Um, but um, this little kind of mystery aspect of it has been really fun. So anyway, guys, just a very quick update today. Um, I don't really have much else to talk about. So I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. Hi, everybody. It's Monday night. It is February the 11th. And it's just after 6 at night. I just got home from work, so I thought I would sit down real quick and record and Mr. Gorn was sitting here on the couch so I thought that uh, maybe he would uh, like to be on camera. I know that you guys like seeing them or seeing him more than you see Bernard. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so um, update for today, typical Monday. I went to the gym this morning. I did about 40 minutes on the treadmill, so yay. I'm not too sure what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, 
because they are calling for a major winter storm to hit our area. Um, 15 to 20 centimeters. I'm not sure what that ends up being in inches, but it's going to be pretty bad. And they're saying blowing snow tomorrow and ice pellets and freezing rain and all the fun stuff. So I brought my... Um, I brought my laptop home so I can work from home tomorrow. I'm not even going to try going in now. They're saying the snow is supposed to start in the morning, but I mean, who knows what time. That could be 4 a.m., that could be 10 a.m. I mean, who knows, right? So it's just easier not to go in. Are you comfy back there, mister? Not to have to um, try and get in and then try and get home. You know what I mean? I can just as easily work from home, so that's not a big deal. But like I was saying... We'll see what tomorrow looks like, and um, in the morning, if it's not so bad just yet, I might head off to the gym in the morning. <laughs> He's just glaring at the camera. <laughs> He's actually watching Bernard, who's all over here, because Bernard's having his, his suppers. Um, Bernard has wet food. He likes wet food. We give it to him in the morning and at night. He also nibbles on the dry food that we leave out all day long. But he's, he only eats dry food. He's only ever had dry food. He doesn't like wet food. We've tried to give it to him, but he has no interest. So anyway, um, reading update for today. Um, I got two books done. Not two done today, um, but I finished um, How Not to Marry an Earl by Christine Merrill yesterday. I really liked it. Four stars. I've talked about this book over the last few days. Um, I thought it was really cute. Like I said, I was really excited about the ending about the finding of the jewels and all those things. I thought that was really cute. And of course there was the whole um, aspect of the fact that um, our main character, Charity, was kind of being lied to the whole time because Miles didn't tell her who he was, that he was in fact the Earl. So yeah, it, it was fun. Four stars. I enjoyed it quite a bit and I'm glad I got to read it. Um, the other book that I finished today was Barking Up the Wrong Tree by Jen McKinley. Um, this is the second book in the Bluff Point series. This one I didn't like quite so much. Um, I'm only giving it three and a half stars. I actually was going to give it three stars, but I gave it an extra half a star rating because like I keep saying over the last few days, I loved the parrot. The parrot was awesome. He was the best part of the whole whole story. I don't want to tell you some of the phrases he was saying because they some of them were swear words, some of them were quite rude, but it was just so funny. And, and it was so great on audio. The narrator did a brilliant job. Um, outside of that, this was an atypical contemporary romance. Um, it got hot and spicy in places. My thing was is that they talk in, like, it's called Barking Up the Wrong Tree. Um, and, you know, all the three books in the series have, like, a dog-themed title. Sorry, Gorn, does that offend you with the dogs? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, they... The dog that she has named Saul that she gets from her neighbor that is kind of given to her in the neighbor's will is barely shown. Like most of the time she leaves him at home while she's doing other things. Now there's another dog named Hot Wheels that is James's dog, our lead male's dog. And he actually has a bum leg so they have him on like this little harness thing so he can get around. It sounds super adorable. So he's shown quite a bit in the book. But Saul isn't and I kind of felt sorry for him. Um, You know. But my main, main issue with this story was that I did not like uh, Carly or Carlotta, um, our main character. She was a piece of work. She, she was more interested in having like a one night stand. You know, she literally sleeps with him. And then, you know, he's kind of already saying, well, you know, I think we could be good together and things like that. And she goes out, like, literally the next night in, like, you know, her sluttiest outfit to try and pick some guy up at the bar. And then the next day after that, he comes into where she's working and starts chatting up with her best friend. And Carly gets all jealous. Like, you have no right to get jealous. So she just kind of, she ran hot and cold and she kind of just bothered me. Um, I like James, but I just didn't like her. Now, there is a third book in the series. I can't remember what it's called now, but I think it's a christmas theme book. So I might hold that one off to December. I'm going to put on my, I do have a list that I start at the beginning of the year of books that, not series that I'm working my way through necessarily, like I am working my way through this series, but not for ones that are stacking the series challenge, but books outside of that. And that if I'm going to hit a Christmas story, I will try and hold those off till December. So, you know, and I start a list. So that's the list I kind of pick from when I am, um, hey, uh, 
he's sweeping when um when i'm picking books for december i know it's a long way off now but uh but yeah no i start these things early in the year so i am currently reading i just started um for my audiobook i just literally i'm maybe an hour into um, Almost Perfect by Susan Mallory. This one's going to be another reread for me. This is the second book in the Fool's Gold series. This book an does annoy me. It's not one of my favorites in the series, but I am reading through the series from start to finish um, over the this year and next year, um, uh, like roughly about a book a month. So um, yeah, this isn't my favorite one, but I'll talk more about this one tomorrow. And my current ebook that I started today because I finished um, the Christine Merrill one yesterday was... Um, or is called All In, and it's by Shelley Shepard Gray, and this is a net galley book. And I'm not too sure exactly what the plot line is, because I didn't really want to read the back of the book, but our main character, Meredith, right at the very beginning of the book, is mugged, um, and she's pushed down rather roughly, hits her head, and cuts up her hand pretty badly, and she gets rescued, in a way, by this gentleman by the name of Ace. His name is Ace Vance. I mean, could you get a better romance novel character name and ace has a son named finn and uh meredith is a pilates instructor and she owns a studio in this town i think it's called bridgeport because i think this is the bridgeport social club series or something like that i can't remember and so once a week she volunteers at the local high school and that's where finn goes to school because he's a teenager and so finn knows meredith so ace kind of sweeps in and um, decides to help her out and, you know, make sure she gets to the doctors and stuff like that. I'm a, almost 20% of the way through this one, but it's a really quick read. It's, it's reading very, very quickly. It's just a little under 300 pages. Um, I'm hoping to get to about 40% of it tonight, like 40% of it read tonight. So I've got the rest of the night, like I said, it's just after six. So I'm going to try and finish that off. And then the other thing I'm going to be finishing, I don't have it anywhere near me to grab and show you is, um, my 40 Years of Harlequin Project, the um, the museum piece book by Ann Stewart. I will be finishing that off, that one off tonight as well. So I will report back on those tomorrow. Um, but anyway, guys, that is it for tonight. Um, I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Hi, guys. It is Tuesday night. It is uh, February the 12th, and it's about 10 o'clock at night. Uh, a little bit later today, um, I forgot to do this earlier, mainly because I work from home today. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, yesterday, excuse me, we got a storm today, uh, a winter storm. Um, it was Environment Canada actually stated that if you don't have to go out, um, they recommended that you don't. So um, I opted to work from home today. I brought my laptop home yesterday. I mentioned this and I'm glad I didn't go in. Um, I got up this morning about six o'clock as I always do. And I looked outside and nothing was happening. So I went online and I looked at like the radar and stuff and it said, you know, tentatively like eight o'clock in the morning it was supposed to start. I thought, yeah, well, we'll see about that. Um, I still kind of even debated for like the next hour or so whether or not to actually go into work because it didn't look like, like it was dark out, like it was really cloudy, but it didn't look like anything was going to happen. I should have gone to the gym if I'd um, been thinking, but I was being very lazy today and I decided to take the day off from doing that. So um, about 8 o'clock or 8.15, I had to log on. I usually, my start time is usually 8.30, but the girls on our Buffalo team start at 8. And um, so they had an 8.15 meeting. So I logged on, got on my cell phone to do the uh, to do the meeting, and I looked outside and it, the snow had started. So it was snowing all day long, pretty much. Um, we had whiteout conditions at certain points, um, like it was really blowing around and stuff like that. And then the freezing rain started tonight. It would have started about four o'clock. So about an hour before I would have had to do my drive home. So I am really glad I work from home today. And I was quite productive at work. Um, I, I, uh, the thing is from working from home, you don't do the normal breaks that you usually would when you're in the office. Um, at least I find I don't. Like I was, st I started, I logged on early and I was working from just after eight. And um, I worked up until just after five because, um, you don't realize, like you're just answering emails and then you kind of look down and go, oh wait, it's like 10 after 5. It's time for me to, sh to shut down for the day. So um, I did take a little break. And the other thing is too, I typically, if I work from home, I don't bother taking like a lunch break, like an hour long lunch break. I just don't see the point. Um, I'm already kind of relaxed. Um, so 
and I can kind of get up and move whenever I really, I can do that at work too. I can get up and move around if I have to go to the bathroom or get a, some more water or anything all like that. Like that's not an issue, but it's just, it's just a little bit more freer when you're at home, I guess. Um, so I, um, I did stop for about half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, and I actually filmed two videos this afternoon. One went up on, or it's today, it went up on Tuesday. And then the other one will go up on Thursday. I have to edit that one still. But I edited the, I edited the one after work. Um, when I was done, when I logged off my work computer and I picked back up my, um, my laptop and, and, uh, and did that. So that was kind of productive. I planned on doing that when I got home. So it was kind of nice I got to do it right uh, at my lunchtime, if you will. So yeah, pretty good day. Um, what else? Oh, books. <laughs> what did I read today? Um, yesterday, uh, yes, yeah, after, cause I, I recorded when I got home from work yesterday. So last night I finished Museum Piece by Ann Stewart. Um, did I talk about this one? I can't remember. I gave it, I think it was three stars. I did enjoy it. It was a cute little story, um, you know, kind of, a uh, that she, the whole plot is, is that she kind of sends him this letter she doesn't even mean to send and, you know, he gets it and she's kind of calling him every name in the book because... She works for uh, a museum and he works for a competing like uh, buyer and um, he keeps buying these pieces out from underneath her nose and she's quite mad at him for kind of swooping in and, and buying these before she can and then of course the two of them develop a relationship. It's it's a it's an enemies to lovers type story and like I said it was cute. I liked it three three and a half stars. I can't remember exactly what I gave it as a rating but then today while I was working away I, I was busier on the phones but um, Again, because, I think it's because I was at home and I didn't have all the background noise at an office where everybody around you was on the phone and the printers are going off and people, one of my biggest pet peeves is people who take phone calls that are on speaker phone and like, so everybody else, I don't need to hear your conversation. I mean, yes, it's work related, but, and these people are the guys in the offices, like the, I don't want to say the directors, but like the managers, close your office door. Like. We all don't need to hear your entire conversation. Oh, it drives me bonkers. Um, but anyway, you don't have all that background noise when you're working from home. So I was able to plug in my audiobook and, and listen away. So I did finish listening to um, Almost Perfect by Susan Mallory. So that was good. I gave that one three and a half stars. That's right. I gave Museum Piece three stars and uh, Almost Perfect three and a half stars. It is not my favorite of the Fool's Gold series. Um, it is the second book in the series. But it, it makes me so mad, this book. Um, every single character in this story, at some point or another, makes me mad. Um, so the whole plot of the story is that um, when Liz and Ethan were in high school, Liz grew up in Fool's Gold. Uh, Ethan is, um, uh, he's pretty, like, one of the sons of the founding family, kind of an idea. Like, old money, they go back. And you know, they were kind of together in high school, but he was, of course, from a good family and she was from the wrong side of the tracks and they spend the night together. And of course, as it always happens, as she gets pregnant and she takes off and then realizes that she's pregnant. So she comes back to town to tell him, finds him in bed with this other girl. And then, um, she leaves again and comes back like five or six years later to finally tell him, Hey, you've got a son. And his wife um, answers the door and she says, you know, like, oh, I'll give him the message kind of an idea. And then a couple weeks later, she gets a letter from him stating that, no, I don't want anything to do with you or your son. Don't ever come back to town. And then at the very beginning of the book, she gets this letter from these two nieces that she didn't know that she had, whose father was in prison and their stepmother had taken off and left them like three months earlier. So they've been kind of trying to get by on their own for three months. And she comes to kind of swoop in and, and rescue them. And then, of course, meets back up with Ethan again, and, and, and the son, you know, kind of finds out about his dad, and the story goes from there. But throughout the entire book, like I said, every character angered me. They were all so righteous and thought that they were so right, like he was, like, so angry at her, threatening to take the boy away and stuff. And then, on the other hand, she was getting mad at him, you know, for, for stuff that wasn't his control. And then his mother has the gall to show up at her house and, and pretty much bitch her out. Sorry for the language, but... uh you know, kind of yell at her for, for things. And then random people in town, she's grocery shopping and people are like, I can't believe you do that to Ethan. So yeah, this book, I mean, it was a well-written book, but every character made me mad. So for that reason, it only got a three and a half star rating. 
And the other book that I am currently still working through, I'm about 80% of the way through it, I will finish it tomorrow, is All In by Shelley Shepard Gray. This book is so good, you guys. Oh my goodness. So this is a net gallery read. I mentioned it yesterday about a woman named Meredith who uh, has a chance meeting with a gentleman by the name of Ace, Ace Vance. I mentioned yesterday that is, I can't stand his name. I'm sorry. Um, and he has a son named Finn. Finn would have been better for the, the male lead's name, but we won't go there. Um, and the two of them are starting a relationship. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's really cute. It's very sweet. This is part of the Bridgeport Social Club series. And what that is, at first when I read that, I thought it was like some sort of like a, a social, like, like a country club, I guess. But no, it's a poker um, club where they meet once a month and play poker or every Friday or something like that. So it's the story of Meredith and, and Ace, but it's also um, kind of telling the story of Finn and what he's going through because... Um, you know, his mother wasn't exactly one of the best mothers and he opted to live with his dad. He's in high school and him kind of making friends with the, the neighbor girl. It's really, really adorable. Um, I, I'm loving this book and I can't put it down. I think it's just fantastic. The writing on it is great. The characters are fantastic, you know? Uh, yeah. So I'll let you guys know my final thoughts on that one tomorrow. But anyway, that's about it guys. Trying to keep it short today. I'm about to head to bed if you couldn't tell and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye guys. Hi guys, it is the 13th of February, it is Wednesday, and it's about 8 o'clock at night. Uh, just coming to you with a quick update tonight. Um, I did not uh, go into the office again today. I um, elected again to uh, work from home. Uh, it snowed again last night. I think I mentioned it was like freezing rain and all this, and when I got up this morning it was snowing again, and I just thought, I'm not even going to bother trying to chance it to get into the office. It just wasn't worth it. So in other words, also no gym again today. And tomorrow's probably a no-go either because it's snowing again tonight. Um, so it's going to be a slow go in and I, I want to get into the office tomorrow. Um, I mean, I've been productive while I've been at home over the last few days, but it's a little bit different being at work. Um, so I'm definitely going to try and make my way into the office tomorrow. So yeah, so that's that. Um, uh, yeah, not too much terribly interesting happening around here today. Um, I'm just relaxing tonight, watching some booktube. I got some good reading done today, which is always good. So let me tell you about what I read. So today I started listening to, on audio, um, oh my gosh, Is It a Night Like This by Julia Quinn. It's the second book in the Smythe Smith series. I might have the title wrong. I apologize if I do. I might be confusing it with the Lisa Kleipas novel that I'll be reading next, but the picture, of course, will be up here. Um, so yeah, so this is, like I said, the second book in the Smythe Smith series, and this follows another one of the women in the quartet. So this series, if you're unfamiliar, is actually a spin-off series of sorts of the Bridgerton series, and the Smythe Smith Quartet is a group of four cousins, and they do a musicale once a year, and they are horrible and they are known to be horrible. Um, it's kind of a running joke within the Bridgerton series and of course within this series as well about how bad that they actually are um, at, uh, at playing these instruments and things like that. So this is the second book and this is the woman who kind of stepped in. Her name is Anne and she stepped in to cover over for another one of the cousins. She's a governess um, of the family so she is not you know, a, uh, a lady or anything like that. And she's had um, some difficulties in her past uh, with her reputation has been tarnished. And she meets up with our main character whose name is escaping me right now, I'm sorry. I was listening to this earlier today and um, I only, I'm about 40% of the way through this one. So I got a good chunk of it listened to today. But um, yeah, I'm, uh, his name is drawing a blank, I do apologize. But anyway, um, he is uh, like, I don't want to use the term courting her because that's not necessarily what's going on, but he fancies her a great deal and he's trying to spend as much time with her as he possibly can. But of course he doesn't know about her history and her, uh, you know, what happened to her before. Um, that's all starting to come out to light now. He was actually banished um, for quite some time after a duel that went awry and... Um, um, he was threatened, uh, you know, I mean, there was the duel, and um, he was shot, and the other guy was shot, 
but um, he's a lousy shot, so he actually hit him. Um, and, uh, you know, the guy didn't die. Neither one of them died, but the father of this, of this nobleman was like, um, you know, you're going to pay and pretty much watch your back. So he left uh, for the continent and uh, spent a number of years there, and now he's back in London. So, um, yeah, I'm enjoying this one. I should definitely get it done tomorrow. My plan is to listen to this one at work tomorrow. Um, I've now kind of really gotten into listening to the audiobooks at work, like kind of while I'm working kind of an idea. So, yeah, I'm enjoying doing that. So I'll probably do that tomorrow. Um, but it was a little bit, it's a little bit difficult to do when I'm at home too, because I have to have my headphones in and to answer my, my cell phone, because I run, um, my work phone through my cell phone when I'm at, when I'm working from home, I have to pause the audiobook on my computer, take out the headphones and then answer my phone, my cell phone. So it's a bit of a pain. Whereas at work, I'm wearing a headset. And I can just pause it and then pick up the phone without having to remove or change the headset or anything. I know, I know, first world problems, right guys? But yeah, so I'm enjoying that one quite a bit. I did finish a book today. I finished Reading All In by Shelley Shepard Gray. I've been talking about this one for the last couple of days. I really, really enjoyed this one, you guys. I gave it four stars. I read this one for NatGal. It was a very sweet contemporary romance. Um, and when I say sweet, I mean sweet. There is discussions of adult content but no adult content actually really happens. Nothing, you know, that's... <sighs> stuff that most people wouldn't have a problem reading. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, it, it was really, really enjoyable. I really liked the relationship between Ace and um, Meredith. I only gave it four stars because, and this is going to seem silly, but I really did not like his name. Ace Vance, it just drove me nuts. I just think it's... It didn't flow well. You know, like, I don't have children, but if, if you name your kids, you want the first and last name to flow well. And his name just didn't flow for me. I, I don't know what it was. That, and he had this thing, like, right from the beginning, from the first time they met, he called her baby constantly. And she made a comment about it, like, you know, why are you calling me? And he goes, oh, something about a term of endearment. And she's like, oh, I think it's kind of sweet. I just, every now and then it's cute. But it was constant, and it, it, it did great on my nerves just a little bit. I don't know. I, maybe I'm weird about that. But yeah, so, you know, there's, there's, it's, I, I think it's that term, too. I mean, if it was sweetie or honey or something, I don't think it would bother me as much. But baby is just one of those, I don't know, it, it just, it, it seems icky to me. I don't know why, but it does. So anyway, um, yeah, but other than that, it was a really good story. Four stars. I really liked, um, the son's story as well. The, the B plot in the, in the book, um, uh, Finn's story. I thought that was really cute. And yeah, I, I'm interested. I'm definitely going to go back and read the first book in the series. And I believe there's going to be a third book coming out soon too. This was the second book in the, uh, in the series. And then the only other bit of reading that I got done today was I am about 70 some odd pages through Night Moves by um, Heather Graham. Uh, this is part of my 40 Years of Harlequin Project book that I'm reading. So far, I'm really enjoying it. This is quite good. So see how far I'm through it. Um, got my little pages marked. I have a week, one week to read each of these. Um, so the plot of the story is about a woman and it starts off like towards the end, which I kind of really like that plot device when uh, authors use it. Um, and it starts off, um, where she breaks into his house and then he catches her and then he catches her and she's up in his room. And then while they're up there, someone else breaks into his house and I'm like, dude, you have such bad luck. And so he grabs her and pretty much like throws her in bed with him to make it look like they're, you know, busy if you, if you will. And, um, to kind of persuade this other person from breaking in, like who, who is coming up the stairs or something like that. Then it flashes back and she is a dancer. If you can't tell that from the uh, outfit that she's wearing on the cover, she's a dancer and a photographer. So that's a good skill set right there. And she, um, she's been hired by him. He's a very famous musician and she's been hired by him to be in his new video, to be a dancer in his video, but to also do the publicity, like photography for it. So, um, we're just at that point now. She is actually raising her brother's three little boys because, um, her brother's wife, so her sister-in-law was, died years earlier. And then her brother passed away like a year before. And so the kids are, are orphans. So she's got custody of them. 
And I guess the main plot that I haven't gotten to yet is that her youngest nephew has been kidnapped. So it's something to do with pictures that she took at some points. We haven't gotten there yet. But um, I'm very, very interested to get in there. Now, my only thing about this that I'm not liking so far, and, and I can't say that I'm not liking it, but it's something that I've definitely noticed, is that he is actually half Native American. And there are some... She, actually, our main character, actually utters... Um, a racial slur uh, in regards to him and then of course her little nephews repeat it um, and I thought wow you know like that's you know kind of a little bit uncalled for she was angry at him at the time but still that's there's no reason to, to do that right now this was written in what is this is this my this is my 1985 book so it's quite a number of years ago but I own a copy of this on ebook because they re-released or they are re-releasing a lot of Heather Graham's old novels now like for ebook for the Kindle or for whatever your device you choose to read on and because I have a copy of it I went to the Kindle edition and I looked up the scene and it's still used like I thought maybe they would have changed it but they didn't so that's an actually an interesting observation I think like just to see that they've left these intact for what they are um, Again, you know, I'm not saying it was, uh, it, it was a racial slur, but it wasn't a horrific racial slur. Um, I'm not going to repeat what it was, but um, if you've read this one, like if you got it for the Kindle or whatever, you, you might know what I'm talking about. Um, almost like, you know, how in football they, that's like the, um, oh, what's a good, is it the Washington Redskins is the football team? Something like that, where you, you call them Redskins, and a lot of people now, you know, they take that very great offense to that, which I can understand. Um, it's something like that, kind of an idea. Um, but yeah, so anyway, um, but I am enjoying this. It, it's, it's a very good um, romantic suspense novel, and I'll definitely up you guys, update you guys as I keep reading this one. So anyway, that's about all that I have for today. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Nope, there's nothing else. And yeah, tomorrow's Thursday. So I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. Hi guys, it is Thursday, February the 14th, and it is about 6.30 at night. I thought I would sit down and uh, do a little quick hello, because um, I am tired. I am completely wiped out. My brain is gone, and I thought before it you know diminishes anymore <laughs> as the night progresses, I might as well sit down and chat with you guys real quick. I don't have a lot to talk about today. Um, very, very, very busy day. Very draining day today at work. Um, I'm not going to get into the whole thing, but it was it was an unpleasant day today, let's put it that way. And it is Valentine's Day, but uh, Garrett and I don't do the whole cards and gifts and flower thing. Um, it doesn't bother me. Uh, his birthday is the end of January and mine is the beginning of March. So Valentine's Day literally falls right in between both of our birthdays. So it's kind of silly to be doing like the whole gift thing, but I do pick up dinner for us. So that's the one thing that we kind of do. It's not like we don't celebrate it. It's just we don't subscribe to the whole cards and flowers thing, um, you know, and gifts and stuff like that. Um, if you do, good for you. Um, we, we choose instead to, to celebrate like our anniversary and stuff like that. So anyway, um, yeah, busy day, um, running around after work, I had to go pick up our dinner. And of course, every restaurant that you you go to, um, I had pre-ordered and, uh, went and picked it up on my way home. Um, but I mean, it was just jam packed and I got, I'm just like, I'm done. I want to go home. I'm just tired. And then I had to stop at the pharmacy because I had to pick up my medication because I was completely out. Um, I took my last one last night and I had kind of, you know, you don't realize how many you have left. And then it was kind of like, oh, sugar, I need more. <laughs> and so I went and did that. Um, and it was kind of nice because I'd had such a lousy day. I was in such a bad mood. And I walked into the pharmacy and when you, st you know, walk in, it's like, you guys probably have this, like, um, like not Wegmans, that's a grocery store. Walgreens in the States, like where you've got like a, a um, like a beauty counter and stuff like that too. Um, so they're right, right near the front. So I walk in and the girl, they're always like, hello, as you come in. And I walked in and I said, hello. And the lady's like, hi. And she was, oh my God, I love your hair. And I went, thank you. <laughs> like this, right? And I thought, 
one little compliment can totally turn somebody's day around. Like it was so nice and I was just so, it made me happy, you know? Um, so anyway, so yeah, so that was nice. So I do also have a couple packages I'm gonna open. Now one is actually a book and I know I do my like used book haul. I've got another book haul coming. So you guys will see that at the end of this month. But I thought because I know what this one is and it's kind of appropriate for today that I thought I would open it. And then the other one involves tea. So I thought that would be fun too. So before I get into the packages, I will tell you guys about the book that I read today because it's the only thing that I got read today. My ebook I have started is, um, oh my goodness, what's it called? I'm probably drawing a blank. Excuse me. Hold on. I can't believe I'm forgetting what it's called. It's by Brie Baker. It is a neck alley read. Um, let me go here, go here. Sorry, bear with me just a second, guys. Totally unprepared. I do apologize greatly. Um, what is it? Books, uh, collections. Excuse me. No Good Tea Goes Unpunished. And it's by Brie Baker. Um, I've literally got three pages of this read. It is a cozy mystery and the theme of the cozy mystery, if you will. It's a woman in the Carolinas, in the Outer Banks of the Carolinas, who owns and runs her own um, ice tea shop. So this is fun. This is the second book in the series. Um, and yeah, um, like I said, I'm two or three pages into it, so I really don't have a lot to, to talk to you guys about. It was just that busy today. I didn't even get to take a lunch to sit and read, so that kind of sucks. Um, and then, but the book that I started, I started yesterday and I finished it today because I, I've really gotten into listening to audiobooks at work. I'm quite enjoying this. I'm going to get so much more read listening to audiobooks at work, um, is A Night Like This by Julia Quinn, which is the second book in the Smythe Smith series. I talked about this one yesterday. It's a story of Anne and Daniel and Anne has a backstory and she's currently working as a governess. I don't want to get into what her history is because you find that out as the story progresses. Um, and as I mentioned yesterday, Daniel had to leave the continent because, uh, or go to the continent because he um, uh, almost killed someone in a duel, which is kind of the point of a duel, but I guess it was a gentleman's duel maybe, and they're not actually supposed to actually shoot at each other or something, or at least not, you know, potentially murder the other person. Um, and then the two of them meet by chance at the musicale, and then of course their kind of romance goes from there. He's kind of pursuing her and she, you know, he's, he's an Earl, I believe. Um, so I'm not exactly sure status quo, whether or not he could, I don't see why he couldn't take her as a wife, but at one point in the book, she offers to kind of be his mistress. So, but she, like I said, I don't want to get into what it is because it was kind of like, oh, I kind of saw it coming, but I didn't. Um, it was really, really good. And again, it's a Julia Quinn. I'm going to give this one four stars. It was fantastic. She writes dialogue so well, and she writes dialogue for so many different characters well. Like, she doesn't do just adult dialogue, you know, like, um, and when I say adult, I mean between two adult figures. Um, like, there are three little girls in the story. They're her charges, because she's a governess. And they are adorable. I mean, absolutely adorable. You can totally picture them and see them as you're, as you're reading this book. It was so delightful. Um, this was narrated by Rosalind Landor and she does a bang up job every time. Um, she is one of my favorites, uh, for historical romances, um, in terms of narration. So I absolutely recommend that you definitely go ahead and check her out or check her, check out what she, she narrates. Cause like I said, she does a really, really good job. So, so that's the one book I finished today. So yay. Starting tomorrow. I will be starting another historical romance, uh, Elisa Kleipas, so that's exciting. Um, and yeah, so that's really all I have book-wise and, and kind of life-wise. Let's open some packages. Um, so this first one, I didn't realize this was coming from the UK, and now I'm slightly concerned about the edition that I got. Damn it, I knew I should have been, ah, uh, I'm disappointed. Yeah. Mills and Boom one hasn't, it's kind of nice to have this edition, but this isn't the one that I wanted. I, I wanted the, uh, the American, um, special edition, uh, edition, special edition edition. Um, this is Vermont Valentine by Kristen Hardy. So like I said, a little appropriate for today, um, because it is Valentine's Day. I've read this one before. I read this quite some time ago 
and um, this is a hundred years of Mills and Boone. Very exciting. So they were must they they were obviously around longer than Harlequin because Harlequin's only been publishing since forty nine. So this book came out in two thousand and eight. So they'd be a hundred eleven years this year. Wow, that's crazy. But it is kind of neat to see the um to see like this cover, especially because it's got the hundred years. So that's kind of fun to have actually now that I'm seeing this. But I still will be hunting out the, the edition that I want. Um, so yeah, but this this was a really cute story. It takes place in Vermont. And I believe that he, um, the the uh, the male lead, um, is, uh, he does maple syrup. Like he taps maple syrup for a living. So, and the original cover, I'll stick the original cover, like the cover I was looking for up here. Um, because I really, really like the cover. I mean, this is nice too, but... I like that one a bit better so yeah but anyway for my collection that's why I will want the other one so that's the first thing I got poor Garrett's sitting here he's got a headache today don't worry dear I'll be done soon and then you can relax so the other place is tea I've been looking at joining like a tea of the month club for quite some time but they're quite expensive especially when you consider shipping to Canada and the other thing is is that I don't want a whole lot of tea that I may or may not like so I came across this place, and it's called the Dollar Tea Club. I will leave a link to them in the description box below. Literally, it's a dollar. One dollar, and I think it's the, there's different levels, but I got like the smallest level, and it's the Explorer level, so you get samples of tea. Now, you can go back to their website and buy more. Like, if you really like one, you can buy more of it. But I thought that's kind of the whole point of a, a something of the month club, is to try it out and see what you think. You don't want to get like a whole big like container of something that you may or may not like. So wish it was more like the shipping is what cost me money. It was $5 for this, you guys. So let's open it up and see. So I did sign up. I'm going to be getting this every month. So I will open them up here for you guys to check out. Um, so let's see what we have in here. <clears throat> well, you get quite big uh, portions here, you guys. Eep really shove this in here okay so what does this say okay oh cool so it says um dear awesome how did they know that was my name you can't wait to explore the wonderful world of tea together trying uh <laughs> to find unique delicious blends to share with you is always exciting let's get the party started p.s found the found a blend you love you can always get more at dollarteaclub.com they're a Canadian company, you guys. I did not realize that. Because I noticed I'm like, it was postmarked in Toronto. So that's pretty exciting. Um, so yeah, so there's my little welcome card. And then I also got a honey stick. That's kind of, you can add these to your order. You can also add filters. Because I guess because it's my first month, they gave me both. So I got filters. I can always use more filters for making my tea. But the honey stick, isn't that cute? So it says, sourced from, I can't read it, <laughs> sourced from a family-run bee farm in rural Canada, this uh, delicacy's deep, rich flavor is derived from the surrounding areas of mixed woods, vegetable fields, and freshwater lakes. Pinch the end to open and stir into the tea, or enjoy as a treat. Belongs, uh, that is pretty awesome. I've never had tea, uh, um, I've never had tea. I've never had honey in tea before, so I will have to try that and I'll report back, you guys. So let's see the teas that I got. So I got, I got like three like decent samples. So I got Coco Loco. That sounds fun. Coco Loco. Um, green tea, coconut rasps, flaked almonds, fla flaked almonds, flavoring, and white chocolate flakes. So green tea, steep at two to three minutes. That is awesome. I'm going to have to take a picture of this put on Instagram because it says, show us how you hashtag tea it up on Facebook and Instagram for a chance to win fun freebies. I like fun freebies. Uh, the next one I got here is, ooh, apple pie. Ooh, that one sounds yummy. And you can, you can um, when you're signing up, you can let them know, no, I don't want this kind of tea or I, I'm not a fan of black teas or I'm not a fan of flavored teas or things like that. I am always a fan of flavored teas, so... This one is apple pieces, white apple pieces, um, raisin, cinnamon, red cornflower petals, um, and flavoring. It's a fruit tea is what it's called. 
So yeah, so that one will be good. That one will be good to try. And the last one, it's like they know me. Candy cane crunch. Black tea, peppermint, candy cane pieces, chamomile, and cornflower petals, strawberry leaves, and natural flavors. That one looks really good, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, I'm very excited. This is a black tea. Yeah, they're down on, or oh, they're in Thornhill, Ontario. That's awesome. That's not far from me at all. So yeah, so oh, I'm very excited to have this. So I will report back on these, you guys. Um, maybe tomorrow I'll try the apple pie when I sit down to talk to you guys at the end of the night. And uh, we can enjoy on that together and sip on that and see what we think. But yeah. So anyway, guys, that is it for today's little clip. Um, happy Valentine's Day, everybody, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Hi, guys. It is Friday. It's February the 15th, and it's about 8.15 at night. I thought I would sit down and have a quick little chat with you because I predict that within the next hour, I am probably going to be in bed. I am fighting it now. I'm like, is 8.30 too early to go to bed? <laughs> wild and crazy night in my house tonight. Um, I am exhausted. It has been a really long week and yeah, I'm just, I am ready, but I know if I go to bed, I'm going to be up at five in the morning and <coughs> excuse me. And that's not going to be any good. Um, because then I'm just going to do this again tomorrow night. So I am best to try and stay up probably till at least 10 o'clock and then, um, get to bed. And you know, if I'm up at six or seven, that's not such a big deal. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I thought I'd sit down and have a quick little chat with you guys. Um, so reading update for today. Um, I've got nothing, nothing interesting happened today, so nothing really much to share. Um, but reading update, I got, I'm almost at 60% of the way through, um, Secrets of a Summer, Secrets of, of a Summer Night by Lisa Kleipas. Um, the first book in the Wallflower series, and I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, I was listening to it at work today, and, um... It is about a woman who, um, and four other women, or younger, not, I don't want to say younger girls, because, you know, they're, they're of uh, marriageable age, if you will, and um, they are wallflowers. They've been spending the last few seasons kind of sitting on the sidelines of all these balls and, and things that are going on, and they would kind of make a pact between the four of them to um, help each other find husbands. So it's, it's fun and they're going from like oldest to youngest, which is kind of cute. But what I really like is that two of the women are, um, are sisters and they're American. So this is being narrated by, I think it's Rosalind Landor and she doesn't do a bad American accent. Um, you know, it's, it's quite good. And so anyway, this is the oldest girl's story. I'm sorry, I'm totally blanking on names at this point, but I'm sure a lot of you have read this. This has been recommended to me by a lot of people. When I mentioned that I was reading it um, in my TBR this month, a lot of people were like, yes, you're really going to like it. Um, so yeah, so she is trying, she comes from a family that does not have a lot of money. Um, she's not part of like the nobility or, I don't want to say nobility, not like they're royalty, but you know what I mean. She's not part of the upper classes. And, but then they don't have any money, so she really doesn't have much of a dowry, so she doesn't have much choice. And there was a really good point made in the story at one, at one point that I, I really appreciated that, um, you know, men at the time could be loud and abrasive and maybe not the best looking, perhaps missing, you know, like not the best, uh, you know, dressing or they, they don't look their best, but as long as they have money, they can find a wife. Whereas the women have to look and act a certain way in order to catch a guy. So, I mean, you know, double standards have been around, around forever, right? So, um, you know, um, I just thought that was an interesting point. But anyway, she's, she kind of needs to marry somebody with a bit of money to help out her family because her younger brothers and they can't afford his schooling anymore. And, um, her brother, I think is 10 or 12 years younger than she is. And, uh, so she's kind of got her eyes set on this one guy and, um, you know, he's kind of got a lot of suitors, if you will. And there is one man named Simon. I remember his name is Simon and he, um, he's kind of got his eyes set on her, but it's almost like an enemies to lovers kind of a relationship. Um, you know, she's not exactly the first pick for him just because of society, not because he doesn't like her, but she, but you know, she's kind of almost at the point now where she's going to offer to start being mistress to some people. 
you know, purely for financial gain in a way. So, you know, it's, it's a good story and I'm really liking it so far. Um, I think this is a series I'm really going to enjoy because I especially like the other, um, the other three girls. Um, this first one, yeah, I like her, but she's actually not my favorite out of the four. Um, I, I'm blanking on names so badly. I know the sisters are Daisy and Lily. Um, that's pretty easy to remember. And then the other third girl, she has a stutter and it's adorable. Um, and then there's one scene where they're playing, um, is it called Rounders? And it's almost like American baseball, but not quite. So that was kind of fun. Um, you know, that scene was, was a lot of fun. So yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying this, this story so far quite a bit. Um, I should, I'm hoping to get it done tomorrow. Tomorrow's the first day of the Create Your Own Readathon vlog, um, or readathon for, um, for February. I know in January, and a lot of you really enjoyed it, I did a separate vlog for that readathon. I'm actually not going to do that this month or next, I'm, no, I'm probably going to do it next month, but this month, um, I just, uh, because it's a shorter month and the videos that I want to do, next week I would bombard you guys with like four videos if I did that, if I did a separate vlog, and I don't want to do that because it's a lot um, uh, for me as well because um, next week is going to be um, my mid-month wrap-up I've got to do, and um, I have my Harlequin Anticipator Reads. I love doing those. And also next Friday is going to be my... Um, March Mystery Madness TBR. I'll be doing that as well. So, you know, I, I don't want to throw like a fourth video in there because it, it does get to be a little bit, you know, too much for not only you guys don't need to see me that much in your feed, but um, uh, it's it's a lot for me to to do as well. So anyway, um, so I promise I will be back for that um, with a separate video next month. I will plan my month out a little bit better. There will be lots of videos next month in March because I do plan on doing um, extra videos every week, every Friday for March Mystery Madness, so that'll be exciting. Anyway, um, that's not what we're here to talk about. Um, my current uh, ebook is um, No Good Tea Goes Unpunished, I think is what it's called. I'm not very far into this, only maybe 10 or 12%. Um, I did not get a lot of reading time today. I, uh, I ended up taking lunch with somebody that I don't talk to very often, which was kind of nice. I was walking down the hall, um, going to the coffee station to grab something. And she says, oh, are you going for lunch now? And I'm like, well, I was going to in a few minutes. And I was just going to go sit at my desk and, and read my book and have my lunch. And she's like, well, come sit with me. And I'm like, okay. So I decided to be social today at lunch instead. So I don't know if I'm going to get a lot of reading done on it tonight. Um, again, Create Your Own Readathon starts this weekend. So I plan on getting a lot of reading done. So I will finish that book this weekend. But essentially, I think I mentioned yesterday, it's about a woman who owns a iced tea shop in the Carolinas. And the book opens up and it's one of her friend's weddings, like it's her child, childhood friend's wedding. And it's being hosted like at her house, like it, out on the beach in front of her house. Um, our main character, uh, I think it's Evelyn. And um, she, uh, the groom ends up murdered. So, excuse me, that's where we are right now. And, oh, sorry, I've got the hiccups, you guys. So anyway, so yeah, so, so far I'm enjoying it. The writing's quite good. This is a net galley book. Um, and yeah, I'm hoping to have this one done by, uh, by the end of the weekend. Um, so that's really all I have to talk about, talk to you guys about this week. Um, of course, before I let you go, it is Friday, which means we're opening my next, um, uh, 40 Years of Harlequin project book. The Night Moves book that I've been reading this week, I did not get much further along on it. I, again, plan on reading on that this weekend. That's my big plan for this weekend is a lot of reading. Other than grocery shopping tomorrow, the hubby and I don't have much to do. Um, on Sunday, I'm going to bingo with mum, but I plan on filming my videos for this week on Sunday. So tomorrow's pretty much my chill day of not much to do, um, other than, like I said, grocery shop. So anyway, let's open the next one. This is from 1986. So this is exciting. Um, holy cow. Either I'm really weak or that tape was really strong. <laughs> Maybe a little of both. What have we got? Ooh, double image by, uh, double images, excuse me, by Patricia Rosemore. A Harlequin Intrigue number 38, you guys. Oh, this is exciting. So from 1986. I think I've read her. Came out in March of 86. I think I have read, read her. To Edward, who always gives me a hard time whenever I threaten to stop writing. And to Wall, who always gives me a hard time. <laughs> That's kind of cute. This should be good. All right, so let's read the back of it, shall we? Uh, the music was hot, but would she get burned? 
Carrie Lacey was in, uh, was enjoying moderate success as, as a director of music videos in Chicago. Then she took on a job of cord of co-directing a video of the, of a top rock and roll group. And before she knew it, her success had turned to trouble. Her collaborator on the project was John Ross, a man who both intimidated and attracted her. Soon after they'd met, dis uh, disturbing things began to happen. Someone tried to break into Carrie's warehouse studio. She was later followed on into a parking garage. Later, one of her tapes was stolen. Does anybody else remember tapes? <laughs> the VCR? Um, Carrie had no idea what was going on, but she suspected that somehow John was involved. Sounds good. Looks like there's like motocross or motorcycle racing or something. Look at his sweater, guys. Can we talk about the fashion? That's what's kind of fun about these is like looking at what people are wearing and... Oh, gotta love a good Argyle sweater. <laughs> I need to knit myself a pair of Argyle socks. That would be fun. But anyway, so yes, this will be my next book. So I'm going to put it up here somewhere, right there. And I will get to that one next week. So anyway, guys, that is it for this video. Um, I do hope you enjoyed it. Um, please leave any comments, questions, or anything at all in the description box below, as per usual. And I will see you guys in my next video. Take care and happy reading, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys.